So I did it again. I hurt myself doing something completely unnecessary. And now I'm regretting it. Now I'm thinking, you know, why did I do that? I, years ago I did it when I was at a American Ninja Warrior place with some friends. And we were doing all these obstacle course stuff and get to the end of the night and a bunch of us were trying to run up this one wall called the wicked wall and none of us could get to the top and i was done we had already taken a group picture people were like Sean, try it one more time try it one more time you can you can do it one more time so i'm like all right one more time and one last time i ruptured my achilles tendon it's like why and i was thinking why did i have to do it one more time this ah uh, if i just wanted ah oh, this is so frustrating this stinks Yesterday, I was at the gym, getting ready to coach a class. Wasn't working out, just waiting for the coach to sh or the class to show up. And I was thinking, you know, things I could be doing to kill some time. I was thinking I could write people's names on the board. But no, instead, I said, I'm going to hang from these rings here and do a little flip. You know, that'd be fun. And it was, until I heard a pop and realized I'd injured my elbow. And then it hurt really bad, so I sat down on a sandbag. And then I woke up on the ground. Yes, I... Fell passed out, hit my head on the floor, and yeah, was in rough shape for a while. Um, you know, eventually I had to go to the emergency room, diagnosed with a ruptured bicep tendon, and I'm like, oh, all of my plans for what I'm going to do this week, and you know, I'm going to work on my house, I'm going to install, you know, cabinets, I'm going to paint, I'm going to drywall, and you know, then I'm going to I'm going to go to a lake with some friends, and we're going to kayak, and we're going to bike, and we're going to swim, and you know, we're going to work out. And I'm like, that ain't happening anymore. <laughs> it's like, because you had to you had, you had to swing from these rings. Like, why why'd you do that, Sean? You're an idiot. Like, I've been dealing with that that the shoulda woulda could us. Like, can I just go back and I just rewind the tape and not do that? You know, I'm like, what if what if someone would have called? What if someone would have done this and just distracted me so I wouldn't have done that? Like, I am living in the what ifs this day, and it's torturing me. It's awful. <sighs> it's discouraging. And maybe you've been there before. Right, something bad happened. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe there was a car accident. Maybe you did something at work and you lost your job, or you said something that ruined a relationship, and you're just like, "Why? Can't, why did? Why did that happen? Why did I do that? Or why did that happen to me? Or why couldn't I've been? In, why did I have to be in that place at that time? And like, what? God, what? 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 What are you doing here? Maybe you've been there. Maybe you're. Maybe you're struggling with that right now. And it's tempting when you're going through those seasons to live in the past and to kind of be like, can I just go back and change the past? And why I wish there was a way that we could go back and just kind of undo the things that have been done and change the past and have the rewind button. It just doesn't exist. It's not out there. The only way we can live is forward. And today I want to encourage you to live moving forward, one day at a time, one moment at a time, knowing yeah, there are better things ahead for us. There are better things ahead for us. I'm encouraging myself with those words today. Isaiah chapter 43, 18 through 19 reminds me of this. God says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Forget the former things, okay? It's in the past. It happened. You can't change it now. You got to move forward. You know, the Israelites, okay? The past is the past. Okay, you've messed up. Okay, you've been judged. Okay, things didn't work out. Okay, but I'm going to redeem this. I'm going to bring you back from exile. I'm going to I'm gonna turn. Okay, this will be fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send Jesus one day. And I'm going to turn all of this bad stuff into good stuff one day. And maybe today you feel like you're in that wilderness and you're in that wasteland. Well, God can bring streams to that wasteland and he can bring good out of whatever situation you're going through. He can redeem it. Uh, Romans chapter 8 says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Doesn't mean, okay, that, you know, he necessarily caused this. You know, I'm like, I'm thinking like, God, did you really want this to happen? Like, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, blame it on God. I'm gonna blame it on myself and says you just did it. Okay, you did it. Now you gotta move forward. And Sean, okay, what's the opportunity here? How can how can you allow God to bring good 
from this. And I'm, so I'm thinking, okay, you know, what, what what's ahead? What's ahead? Well, on, on Tuesday, you're going to have surgery and you're going to meet a new doctor. You're going to make some new friends in the hospital. Okay. You're going to have, um, you know, an experience of going through the recovery process from a surgery that maybe somebody else is going to have to go through someday. And you're going to be able to be there for them and encourage them and say, hey, you know, here are some things that I did that helped me get through it. And, you know, I, I, you're eventually you're going to do some PT and you're going to learn some stretches. You're going to learn some exercises that are going to make, it's actually going to make you a better trainer. Okay. It's like a fitness instructor. You will be better having gone through this injury. So there is something to look forward to. There is a way that God can redeem this. So right now I'm, I'm trying not to live in the, oh man, like I, I, I can't do all these stuff. Like I was all, all the things that I had planned. Okay, no, you can't do those things, but you can do other things, right? You can, you can maybe you're going to go to the lake with your friends next week and right instead of kayaking, you're just going to sit on the boat with everybody and cheer them on, cheer them on as they wakeboard. And you're just going to be an incredible encourager instead of all eyes trying to be on you, Sean. Okay. You're going to be the ones that are going to, you know, encourage other people, you know, maybe, maybe, okay. Maybe you can't swim, but Hey, you can do air squats. Okay. You need a little exercise. You can go for a little, little walk. Okay. It won't be maybe the most stimulating. It won't be as great as swimming, but you can figure something out and it'll be fine. So what about for you? How, what, what, what is God doing or could do to redeem your situation? Maybe the thing that's keeping this situation from being redeemed is some past hurt that you have yet to forgive. Right? Maybe you're living in the past because of something that somebody else did to you or a loved one and you can't get past it. And the thing that's going to help you move forward is to forgive. Right? And it's going to take time to grieve the loss and the pain. But if you can get to the point where you can say, hey, because Jesus forgave them, because he forgave me, even though I didn't deserve it, I can forgive this person who has hurt me, my offender. I can release them from, you know, these ill feelings that I have towards them and, you know, pray for them and want what is best for them. That'll help you move forward. Saying, hey, I don't want to live in the past and just let them haunt me with what they did. That's what's going to happen if you keep holding on to the resentment. But if you can move forward by forgiving, whew, a better day is coming. Let me just end with this passage of scripture from uh, Psalm chapter 66. It's helped me you know, get through some discouraging times. Psalm 66, verse 10 and following. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Oh, God's word here. You know, it's reflecting, reflecting on the hard times that they have gone through. Can you imagine? Okay, God testing us. Remember that time, that season when God tested us, refined us like silver? We felt like we were in prison. We were slaves. We were exiles. Man, we, we, he laid heavy burdens on our backs. Life was tough. We were struggling with anxiety. We were struggling with depression. We were struggling with physical illnesses. It didn't seem, oh man, it was discouraging. Yeah, man, you let God, you let men ride over our heads, right? People were, people were slandering us. People were taking our jobs. They were getting our positions at work. Things were not going, they weren't going our way. They were going everyone else's way, right? And then people let us know about it and it was very discouraging. We went through fire and water, right? There are going to be seasons where we're going to go through fire and water and we're just trying to get through not being completely charred and we're just trying to keep our head above water. But this is what is the result. But you brought us to a place of abundance. God, you have brought us to a place of abundance. And I'm looking forward to that day that God brings me to a place of abundance. I know he can do it even with this injury right now, right? I'll be better for it afterwards, after I recover. Day's coming. And I will certainly be better when Jesus returns and makes all things new. And on that day, if I continue to trust Jesus through the ups and downs of life, yeah, there'll be a reward waiting for me, waiting for you, waiting for those people who have trusted God through all the ups and downs in life and didn't dwell on the past, but learn to forgive and learn to move forward and said, God, we trust you. 
Help us get through this season. Help us to move forward, God. There is a good future that you have in store for us. So today, don't dwell on the past, right? Don't dwell on the glory days of when you used to have your health or when you used to have that relationship or used to have that job, you used to live there. Okay, you know, no, move forward. It's the only way to live. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that you are a God not of the past, but of the present and the future. Right, God, yes, you have worked in the past and you have done incredible things in the past, but you also have incredible things in store today and tomorrow. So help us to trust you through it all and look forward to the good things that you have in store. We know that because of what you sent your son Jesus to do, to die on the cross, but not just to stay dead, but to rise from the dead, to conquer the grave. So God, we look forward to your redemption story and how it fully plays out in our lives. We don't know how it'll happen, but we are trusting you that it will one day. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.